So the idea behind this lens makes a whole lot of sense. You take the old kit lens, reduce it down to a pancake size, and release it with your brand new a7c which is a compact full frame camera body a lot of people have reviewed this lens i've read about it and people seem to like it because well it's it's sharper than the old one it's it's fine it's compact it's lightweight which is good and fine and there are positives to it but the biggest problem i have with this lens is probably the price of 500 dollars. i think for 500 dollars, this is probably the worst full frame lens deal out there in existence today. Let's start by doing a quick tour around this lens and giving you guys some of the positives before I dive right into the negatives. This is a very compact pancake style zoom lens. Sony boasts it is the world's smallest and lightest full frame standard zoom lens. This lens has a retractable design meaning you have to open it up or extend it like this before you can use it. So there's 28 millimeters as you zoom in, the lens kind of goes in and out and there's 60. You have a metal mount, electronic connections because this is an autofocusing lens, FE 4 to 5.6, 28 to 60, E mount on one side and Sony on the other. It features a zoom ring in the center. This is what you use to open up the lens for you to use it. In front of this zoom ring is a small focus ring that is not connected mechanically to the lens, so it does rotate infinitely in either direction. The front lens element is flat and relatively compact. Minimum focusing distances vary from 0.99 of a foot over to 1.48 feet, which is not great and an odd filter thread size of 40.5 millimeters. The entire lens is made out of plastic and rubber and glass, so it is very lightweight. It features a rounded seven blade diaphragm, a linear autofocus motor that does autofocus internally, and it is silent, which is great. The whole lens is dust and moisture resistant. There is a very small rubber gasket around the mount, as well as numerous other gaskets inside of this lens. Eight elements in seven groups, and it boasts sharper performance and better colors than the predecessor. So you have the old 28 to 70 millimeter on the right and the new 28 to 60 millimeter on the left. It's half the size of the old kit lens. That is the tour around the lens and I'm gonna go back to price. Again, $500 for this lens. So I'm going to evaluate its performance and its build quality based on its price point. It's a $500 lens. I'm gonna evaluate it like a $500 lens. That being said, here are all of my negatives. Now I know with the a7C camera body, if you buy this lens as a kit, it is about $300, so it's significantly less money. But even at $300, these negatives still apply. The first one is, it's such a cheap feeling lens. I know it's made out of plastic, it's made to be lightweight, it's made to be compact. It reminds me a ton of very cheap $100 kit lenses that I used to shoot on Canon DSLRs back in the day. I mean, you could just take a listen to it, I would say that this feels cheaper than even the APS-C power zoom lens, if that's even possible. That's like one of the cheapest feeling lenses out there. The second thing is the limited zoom range. Obviously they've cut the telephoto side from 70 millimeter on the old kit lens down to 60 millimeter. And while the focal range is definitely usable for what you would use as a street photography lens or an everyday lens, you're kind of missing the more telephoto side where you can take some nice portraits with blurry backgrounds. And also on the wide end, 28 millimeters on a full frame is really not that wide. When I compared it to the old kit lens, I was able to get much more pleasing portraits, even though both of them were shot at f5.6. But take a look at the bouquet at 60 millimeters versus the bouquet at 70 millimeters. It does make a difference. Reason number three, I'm not a huge fan of this lens is it's a very marginal improvement. It wasn't a huge difference. In some of the shots, they looked almost identical. I did tell that there was a bit of an improvement in colors, especially skin tones with this new kit lens. But if you are buying a lens to photograph people, a kit lens is probably not going to be your first choice. There are many other options out there that do a better job with skin tones. And while things like colors and corner sharpness are definitely improved with this lens, it still suffers from barrel distortion, especially on the wide end. It still suffers from pretty noticeable chromatic aberration. 
and flare control is not the best either. The next thing that I'll talk about is I believe item number four as to reasons why I don't like this lens is it is terrible for video work, absolutely terrible. It doesn't make any sense why Sony would release this compact lens with the a7C, which is a camera really geared more towards video folks because the viewfinder is tiny. And if you guys haven't watched my review, check out my latest video that I posted last week. The reason why this lens doesn't make sense on that camera body is because this zoom ring, as you move in and out, there's no possible way to move it in a smooth fashion. It is always jerky. When you compare it side by side to the old Sony kit lens, it blows it out of the water. The old Sony lens is much more refined. Obviously this doesn't make a big difference if you are just using this lens for photography. If you are planning on recording video and zooming in and out while recording video, there's really not a smooth way to do it with this 28 to 60 millimeter lens. The next thing that I'll say is this lens is a variable aperture f4 to f5.6, or at least that's the way that Sony labeled it. And it's true, it is f4, but it's only f4 at 28 millimeters. That means as soon as you move it ever so slightly to 29 millimeters, now it's f4.5. So really this lens is f4.5 to f5.6 throughout almost the entirety of the zoom range. So it's not ideal in low light situations. It's also not great for background blurs. If you are planning on using this lens indoors, I'd highly recommend making sure that you have adequate lighting. Outside, it's probably fine, like on a super sunny day like today, you'll get away with it. But indoors, and especially in low light situations, you'll probably want something that can let in a little bit more light than f4.5 to 5.6. The next thing that I'll mention with this lens is that you don't get any sort of OSS optical stabilization. So if you are planning on vlogging with an old A7 such as this one, it's not going to be the smoothest thing in the world. Ultimately, when you look at the package that you're getting with this lens for $500, I simply cannot recommend it for the money. There are so many other third-party lenses such as the Tamron 28-75 f2.8 constant throughout the zoom range that is much, much better than this lens in terms of performance. Yes, it's larger, but the price is very close, at least on the used market. You could pick up one of those for around $600. If you absolutely need a small, cheap, inexpensive kit lens, then you can pick up one of the old Sony kit lenses for around $150. That's what I paid for this one. And that makes a whole lot more sense as far as price to performance. Initially, I was very excited about this lens when it was announced and I waited for the pre-order, but now having used it over the last couple of weeks, I can't help but be a bit disappointed, especially for the price. If this was $200 or $250, I would say, okay, it's fine, it's fine, but for $500, it just doesn't make any sense. So those are my thoughts with this lens. Hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think of this lens and its performance and I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.